אן, הלכות שליח ציבור, אן סימן רש נ"ג, אן ויר אפ טו סעיף ט"ו, מרן רייטס, אן דיס קאמס פרום דה טור, שליח ציבור קבוע יורד לפני התיבה מעצמו ולא ימתין שיאמרו לו. If you have a set שליח ציבור, we spoke before, based on the Gemara, that the person that who is not appointed as the Shaliyah Tzibur is not supposed to run when they tell him go to become Shaliyah Tzibur. He's supposed to hesitate in the beginning once, twice, and th- third time he gets up and goes, unless, of course, he's told by the Gabai or by the Rav. He's told by a Gadol and Misarvin the Gadol. But otherwise, there's a concept of Siruv. There's a concept of not, not jumping into a position of Kavod when the uh, first, t- first guy tells you you know, become Shaliyah Tzibur. But that, says the tour, does not apply to someone that's appointed as the Shaliyah Tzibur Kavua, as the set Chazan of the shul. That person comes time for Tfilah, he should already be up there. And, you know, if he's not, actually, it will be Tirha the Tzibur is, is, is taking the time of the Tzibur for no reason, which is something Chazal took very seriously, not to waste even a second of the time of the Tzibur. So hence, the Shaliyah Tzibur Kavua says Maran, should go, lifnat teva, should stand by the bima, even without anybody telling him, because he is expected to be a uh, shaliach tzibur. The, the Ramah writes, that he should now wait for other people. Already he has been appointed, and if, if he doesn't get up, that, that's just the disrespect to the tzibur. Tzibur already has appointed him, has hired him to do it. If you don't do it, it's disrespect to the tzibur. And also, of course, it is the waste of the time of tzibur as well. Maran writes in Siman, if he's not a set shaliach tzibur, sarich resarev me'at kodem she'yered lifna'at teva. As we mentioned, the Gemara says you're supposed to um, do the siruv a little bit, not, not to jump into it. The Gemara in the Flamedale, the Mudalef, the Gemara in Masad Brachot, says that the first time um, you say no, second time you show yourself that you're okay, you'll, you'll be ready to do it if they ask, if they want. Third time they tell you, you'll, you'll do, it, um, do it right away. That's the concept of tarof, mina Torah. That's where it comes from. So it says the Shekha Aruch, Kodem she'yered lifnat teva, velo yoter midai, but not too much. Aval pam rishona mesarev, first time he says no. He prepares himself as if he want, he's ready to get up. Right away, you, you, you go quickly, not to waste any longer, um, any, any more of the time of the Tzibur. If the person who is telling you to become Shalak Tzibur is Adam Gadol, then you're not supposed to refrain, you do it right away. Says the Mishnah Berurah, לסרב שליח ציבור שלא רצה להיות עוד שליח ציבור וקיבלו אחר במקומו, שליח ציבור that basically um, gave in his resignation as שליח ציבור, he said I don't want to be a שליח ציבור anymore, the ציבור said okay fine, and they went and they uh, appointed somebody else instead of him, אין צריך רשות. Then he doesn't need, um, he doesn't need permission, כיוון שבידו עוד להיות שליח ציבור, he still could become שליח ציבור. In other words, he, he was appointed. Now he's getting older. He says, you know, I can't be kavua all the time, and so on and so forth. And he basically said, you know, you can find another person. Still, he has the original appointment of the, shali- uh, of, of, of the ציבור because they didn't fire him. He wasn't, he wasn't rendered invalid. He just said, I don't want to do it as, as much anymore. So he, he doesn't need the reshut of the tzibur. And that's when the shaliach tzibur, uh, the new shaliach tzibur is not there, or he's okay with the original shaliach tzibur to go up. But if he is not, you have to ask permission from him because you are now interfering f- with his job. And that's something that you would need reshut for. The Mishnah Bura says, take a look at what I explained in Biru Alakha, that perhaps this Shaliyah Tzibur um, also should, should get permission from the Tzibur to cover all bases. Kalal, 
this that says when you have a, a gadol, someone that's in charge, or um, someone that is a great personality telling you, then you don't do tarof, you don't do stiruf adal, says the Mishnah Buram, the en mesarvin le gadol, because the halacha is en mesarvin le gadol. Now, the katfu atosafot, so per in the psachim, the tosafot in psachim, right? This is in Daf Pevav Amud, Amud Bet of Masachat the Pesachim. The Bedvar Gasut Veserara, that if they, they're giving you something of, um, you know, a position of Kavod, a tremendous Serara, Afiru Aomer Lo Adam Gadol Yisabed. Then, even if the, the person that tells you is Adam Gadol, you still would do a little Siruv to show the humility that is needed for every year. And, um, if a person is Khoshesh, to be a Shaliyah Tzibur, because he's not sure if he could do a proper job as a Shaliyah Tzibur. He doesn't know, if, if, you know, let's, let's imagine, let's say, Monday, Thursday, he doesn't know if he could read properly the edition of Tahanun, or is, you know, Yamim Nuraim, one of the Tanit days that there are additional reading, and you don't know if he could do a proper job. Or some people have tremendous emata tzibur. They get up there in front of the tzibur, the public eye really renders them completely invalid because they start shaking and start mumbling and it becomes very difficult for them. They can't, they can't pr perform well in a tzibur. Then the, um, the alakha would be in, in that case, you don't necessarily, if you don't have kavana at all or you can't, Perform properly, the Kafuchayim writes, you could be Mesarev even to Adam Gadol. He says, I, I, I can't do it. I don't do it. Because you're doing this for the good reason, for, for a proper reason. And Ramon Chadiyahu used to say that you, you, you tell the reason to the Gadol. You go to him afterwards, you say, Mehila, or whoever the Gabai is, the Gadol is. You say, look, you know, I shouldn't be a shalom disrespect. I, I don't feel comfortable to be the shaliyah tzibur for X, Y, and, and Z reasons. And that, of course, is, is a proper conduct, says the, says Ramur Khalidiyah. Says the Shukharuf, next Sif, in Sif, Yud Zayin, Im ta'ah shaliyah tzibur usikhina amida akhir tahtav. Imagine if the shaliyah tzibur makes a mistake in a way that you have to now appoint someone else under, under him, instead of him. In the middle of Tvilas, Shaykh Sibur got stuck or he, he got sick or, or, you know, we had we had one time in the middle of Tvilah, Rosh Hashanah, Shaykh Sibur fainted. Not here. It was here. This is 25, six years ago. And he literally fainted in the middle of Tvilah. And it was not feeling well. Of course, in the middle of Tvilah, you have to appoint somebody else. So imagine in the middle of Tvilah with the whole drama, you tell someone, says, no, no. Uh, no tar off in the middle of the thing. You tell you, 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 you have to be feeling the sense of responsibility. That's not time for seruv. You go right away to shukaruv. And um, next, if Maran writes, see if you had, however, any already if now teva, we perish for gadai svuin. Now, this is you have, you have to know some, some basic background history for this if. And we'll first read it and then we'll explain what the back, backdrop of this is. If the Shariah Tzibur says, I don't want to go become Shariah Tzibur right now because I have um, colorful clothing, right? I don't have black and white. I, I, have, my, I have colorful clothing. Or um, or I'm wearing a, a sandal, a flip-flop. You cannot appoint him on that fila as a Shariah Tzibur, even if he goes and changes his, his clothing and his shoes. Still cannot become shaliyah. Tzibur mipenesh terach af kursin laakpid bekach, because there was a minhag of of minim and kursim that they were very makpid not to have sandal, not to have any color in their clothing when they when they when they davened and we were choshesh. We are concerned that maybe this guy shema af kursud nizrakabo. Maybe he had he had thoughts of Afik Rasud, and that's why he refrained from wanting to go down to the Teva to be the Shaliyah Tzibur with, um, with his sandals or with his um, colored clothing 
And therefore, in that fila, we don't allow him to be the Shadat Sibur altogether. The Mishnah Bura writes, Even if he regret, regrets it afterwards and says, already over He says, No, 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 I'll go with my colored clothing. Still, we're not, we're not going to allow him. So why is it so then only that fila? If you're Khoshesh that he's a Fikores, that he, he is a heretic. So then just this, you know, disqualify him and invalidate him from being shots forever again. Says the Mr. Buran, no, because we haven't heard from him, the Ferush. We don't have any real indication that he he is um an Afikores. He hasn't stated that, but he may have had some thought crossing his mind of a fikursud, and for that alone is enough to, to disqualify him from what that fila. And again, if there's no indication further afterward, we don't necessarily disqualify him from, from, from later further fila. Now, this is, of course, something that you have to understand it was very much um, bound to the time that they had in the time of Chazal. Now, this is a little bit different. Time of Chazal, the, the Afikor Sudan Minim, it was a very, very strong pool um, of, of culture and, and the Hashkafa within the Jewish community. And this is not just um, the time of Chazal. The Rambam writes, for instance, we, we don't appreciate this. Rambam writes that had it not been because of him, Anrab Sadia Gaon, the entirety of the Eastern Jewry would be completely swiped with, by, by, by Karaites, by Karaim. The movement of Karaites was so strong in the time of Rafsadia Gaon and Rambam that had it not been because of him and Rafsadia Gaon, who was basically the Rish Galuta, he was the, the last Rish Galuta who had the governmental power. And Rambam, of course, had the, uh, the power from the, the palace of, the, of King Salah Adin, which also was a tremendous, tremendous king. You know, King Salah Adin was the one that act, actually took back the um, Eres Israel and the surrounding areas from the Christians. In other words, in the time, the beginning after, uh, you know, Islam advanced tremendously in, in all of the region and they took Eres Israel and they subordinated Jews and Christians that were in the area. That really uh, prompted Pop, Pope to, to um, initiate the Crusades. He said, how can you sit idly by and watch what happens to your brethren in, um, in the Holy Land? So the Crusaders came to oppose the Muslims and to, to release the Christians from the hand of Muslims. But on the way, they killed all the Jewish villages and cities that they was on the way because why not? You know they hated the Jews anyways. So they they took Eretz Israel and until the time of King Saladin that that took back um, Eretz Israel was a tremendous and mighty king. It was not just the king in Egypt. You know it, it was uh, you know he he took he took much of the the Middle East under his control. So that, that, or at least Eretz Yisrael, I'm not sure exactly much of it, but he was, uh, you know, and Rambam was his private doctor of the palace. And he gave Rambam power, Rambam enforced mikvaot, tvilat kala, many, many other elements because the Jewish com community was given to his hand. The concept of Nagid started with Rambam. Nagid was basically like a Rosh Galuta that the Gemara talks about that was the appointee of the government to lead the Jewish community. In Bavel was called Rosh Kaluta. They had police, they had, they had their own um, enforcement system and, and, and so on. In Egypt, that became Nagid. Rama was the first one, Rabbi Rambam and Rambam was the second one, Rambam's grandson was the third one. Then he kind of like went out of Rambam's family uh, and was given to the biggest time Hacham of, of the time, which was tremendous, you know, unlike the Rosh Kaluta, this was like a chief rabbi type of thing, which had the power of the government behind him. Radbaz, Rabbeinu David ben Zimra, was the last of the Negidim in Mitzrayim. He was for he lived a very, very long, unusually long life for that time. He lived well into his 90s. So for 50 years, 
he was the Nagid in Mitzrayim, and then he made Aliyah, he came to Eretz Israel, and actually he overlapped with Maran, with Yosef, Maran of Shukaru. That's a story by itself. But that's the, the Koach of Nagidim. So you have to understand that this was a very popular um, you know, trap, basically, for, for the Jews in the time of Chazal, and the, the thoughts of Minut. And again, at some point, it was Christianity that was very rampant in the time of, uh, we spoke about this in, in the yard site of Rabbeinu Yonah, that Rabbeinu Yonah and Ramban were the two that really stood, uh, the Amdu Beperets, they, they, they stood the winds of, um, of uh, you know, the, the, the Christian uh, hazeltizing the, their faith. The Ramban had the famous debate with Pablo Cristiani, his student that became a Meshumat. So these were, like you think about Haskala in Europe, and how it, it swiped brains of Cladison because it was in, in, you know, intellectual winds of, of a new world and so on and so forth. It became a very big Nisayon, even for from community. So put that in perspective with thinking about the time of Chazal with Minut and time of Rambam with Karaites and time of uh, you know, pre-World War II with Haskalah, those are basically very similar patterns of history that you find. And therefore, Hazal are very concerned with the small, slightest indication that maybe there are some thoughts of minut in the mind of this person. And therefore, we, we put him on hold until fur it's further uh, confirmed his, his faith. So that's... Philosophical, that's correct. But again, we're talking about Christianity, we're talking about Car rights. We're talking about, yeah, we're talking about serious, serious uh, deviations. So that's that's basically that. And and see if you Tet, we will continue in the days to come.